three, two, one. Planet X Records, YouTube channel live. Been putting in work for a long time. The man that needs no in introduction, Sharon Hellraiser Smith. Um, man, we've had him on the old show so many times and I wanted to bring you all the visual plus most important thing right now, Risen documentary, the story of Sharon Smith. Go to Amazon Prime since you're all quarantined and you can't go outside anyway. It's a perfect time yep. for you to go support the film. So talk to him, Rays. Yep, it's the perfect time for you to sit there and get some enlightenment because that's going to enlighten you. Mm -hmm. Make you think about things you don't normally think about. That's always there. Mm -hmm. Damn it's right. Gonna touch you. It's going to touch you. Yeah, it's the film's absolutely incredible. Actually, after you watch it, head on over to my film channel YouTube. What up, Rick? Shout out Rick Boston. He's he's in the he's in the house. Um, oh, that's GGO right there. Yeah, man. Share share out the link, Rick. Try to get anybody who wants to ask Ray some questions. I'll take questions at the end. Um, head on over to my film channel, youtube.com slash planet X film. Check out the paradigm review show where we just reviewed, uh, risen documentary. It's like one of the first reviews of, of risen up. There's a, there's a couple on the tube, but you know what I'm saying? Frank's and mine are the best ones up right now. Um, I want to start, I'm going to go straight in. Ray's. I mean, you're the man who needs no introduction. So go to hellraiser music. Dot com and get all raises music follow him on social media we'll the links will be under the video we'll drop them at the end but i'm gonna go straight in on this risen film if that's okay with you sir let's go okay uh first off i just wanted to see how the fan response was uh have, have any, has any of your uh, fans hit you with any uh feedback on you know any any of your social media yeah. links or anywhere you've been yeah. checking i was wondering actually, what they think actually it's been lots of feedback and how's that looking it's, it's, it's inspiring to hear the feedback that it's getting right now because when I it's funny because when I was thinking of doing it when we just talking about doing it I knew it was going to be personal and, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, I, and before I got into doing it, I said the only way I'm going to do it is if it's going to be inspiring people if it's not going to if it's going to be influenced or some negative or something something like that right right then 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 I got to think it over and um, the, the the feedback been bananas. Like, they like, thank you for, for putting something out like this right now at this time. And um, they're like, wow, like, this, 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 this is something really, really real that I, I'm glad to hear this come out right now. This is something that people need to pay attention to. Thank you for telling this, telling, 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 telling this, still telling your story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I noticed, um, Frank had mentioned that in the uh, film threat podcast that he did about how you were hesitant of, of having the camera be on you and et cetera. I mean, as obviously anybody would be. And, um, but I mean, yeah, I, I think what makes it different is like you opened up more than any, any, but really anybody ha ever has that we've ever seen in a hip hop or that I know of in a music documentary. So it's kind of what made it different. You know what I'm saying about it? It was no acting. Right, right. <laughs> it was all reality. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's that was the impression we got. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to peep uh, the review that we did, but yeah, we all kind of had that same same impression. Yeah. That was all everyday life. Facts, facts, facts. You uh, you good, my man? You're kind of bouncing around a little bit there. <laughs> my, my, my phone, I had to charge it up real quick. It word. To die out. word, 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 word. That's facts, that's facts, that's facts. So, yeah, man, uh, also, I just obviously want to shout out Frank because, like, you know, man, they did such an incredible job shooting it and editing it. Um, hey. Frank and Rob, yeah, played. They did a bananas. This, this came out bananas. Yeah, it's so good, man. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I learned so much from Frank when I came to the Sons of Man reunion show with you guys because uh, he told me how he used to be the y'all's publicist back when you started. Like, like I was just so impressed how humble Frank was and 
how much he taught me about, you know, the, the Sons of Ed movement, because I thought I knew a lot about it. But I'm like, here I am with the guy who was your original uh, publicist. And now he's filming your documentary. And like, this guy does everything about you guys. You know what I mean? That's why I was no better person to do it with. Because then I would have sure. had, had to explain all of that to a person. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody could have understand it, understood it, period, man. <laughs> no, no one can relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. That, that thing you through a journey in the 90s, too, right? Yeah, yeah, dude. I love, man, the most impressive thing was uh, how you guys developed your style, you know, in in, Bro in Brooklyn. And, and, you know, you guys had that kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but I guess similar to that Wu-Tang style that they were doing in Staten, Staten, but how you guys developed separately. That was the most impressive thing about the style to me because – as me and you have spoken on nowadays, the big thing is just biting. You know, you just go find the best guy and like, oh, Riz is over here rapping like this. So obviously I'm a spit like him. But for y'all, I mean, y'all developed, uh, you know, separately, which, which is like ridiculously impressive, you know. It's deep because they, they made you scared to be yourself now. For reals, for reals, for reals. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, so... Going into the kind of like um, healthcare aspect of, of the film, which I've I, I spoken on before, a lot of the big question that I get about you when people see you on my channel and like see our stuff together is they want to ask me about, about like your health situation and kind of what happened to you and stuff like that. And I'm far from a health expert. If people know me from doing my music at this channel, you, you know what I do. So I think your film explains that better than I ever could. But I wanted to get your thoughts on... Uh, this political debate going on about universal health care and um, like how, how you think that would have helped you. You know, this is America where we get where we pay a premium for this private health care insurance and all the all the fees are marked up type stuff. Um, seeing, seeing this, you know, I have to wonder if that couldn't have helped out with your situation. You know what I mean? If we all were like a country like Canada, for example, right? They have free health care. They all just go. They don't get charged by a doctor. So I was wondering what, what your thoughts on it were. Well, it works in a different way because health care plays a part in things. They always got their hands in your pocket. Right. They're going to tax you, tax you, tax you, tax you around, and they're going to hold it. So if nothing ever happens to, to, to the point where you need need that kind of budget to open that money and that health care budget, you would never touch that money. You wouldn't ever even know nothing about that money. Right, that right, just, right. That shit would just sit there and keep keep keep, keep accumulating. And then just, and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they rob it. Right, and, right, um, right. And then they come up with something to, to, to attack it. So for real, so but do you feel like if we were all covered, like it kind of this Bernie Sanders argument that if we were all covered, you know, that wasn't private insurance that we get from our jobs. Do you feel like that would have helped? No, but it's showing you what you're not paying attention to. Yeah. The, the real shit about to start jumping off and they, they, they're going to put it, they're going to make you feel stupid. Like, like it was your fault. Right. It was right, your right. fault. Like, well, right. you should have been prepared for this. Right, you're right, right. You're gonna be sitting there looking stupid, like, "Oh shit! I, if I'd have known this, I'd have did this, I'd have did that." They gonna throw that bone on you. They are gonna make you feel like it was all your fault. So get ready, feel guilty. The guilty bone will just get it thrown, thrown around. Word, you know? word, word. But it's real though, because if you was eating healthy, then you won't need no health care shit. Yeah, you know? I feel that. And it just works in so many different ways. Because you know they 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 the ones fucking buying buying these damn sicknesses and shit that's giving them damn health healthcare people buying that shit, you know. Because if there's no problems like that, they ain't got no 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 existence. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the whole thing that they that they charge for medicine to sell you pills, but not create cures that would relieve you of your illness. Because if you were cured, then you wouldn't buy you wouldn't buy their product. Like the whole supply and demand that's principle the, that's the biggest drug 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 business in, in history exactly but i was just wondering do you think if you were covered under like universal health care would that have helped you with your situation would you have gotten any benefit from it if you could have just gone straight in and been covered or do you think it would have just 
not been much different from but what you got to see where, where where would that money come from that money will have to come from some something somewhere somewhere yeah that money don't just fall from the sky for that no i hear you it would be taxes but you know i mean is that any different than us paying you know 80 million dollars a day in iraq or afghanistan that's that's all i'm wondering like what's the trade off yeah, if we do that or unless you're going to do a union unionize it yeah, um, yeah. unionize it. It's different ways of going, but it's gonna take some, 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 something to do it. It is not just gonna happen out of nowhere. Right, 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 right. I hear you. I hear you. Um, something that you just alluded to, as far as putting the blame on us and where does the blame lie, and um, the current event topic, which ever the reason everyone's stuck inside watching us right now and watching the Risen documentary on Amazon Prime um, is the coronavirus. Can I? Uh, You've probably alluded to such things, and I can imagine what your opinion would be on it. But what do you think of this current uh, pandemic epidemic of the coronavirus? Like psychological warfare and chemical and biological warfare on on top of that. To the highest degree. <laughs> to the highest degree now. Yeah. Now they now they're not playing no games now. Well, what what we would say about like sons of man and what and what you have all taught me being the you know. Uh, being the the legends that you guys are, is this biblical topic that you guys like have frequented that a lot of people would say um, either like you're 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 using a piece of history or you're like repeating these scripts or like we said before the whole conspiracy theory thing. But when you guys talked about these biblical plagues, like you can you can really say that you were highly advanced and futuristic because look look at this now. This is supposed to be such a basic uh virus as we said and look at the effect it's having you know do you feel like this is kind of a topic you guys have covered before in your material there's a possibility possibility of that well it's a lot of the, a lot of this stuff is all related of in the in the scriptures to to what we're going through in reality right now that's what I, that's what i was getting at you just not said it far. better it's not than far. Me. <laughs> right now it's not too far away for right now yeah, I'm saying it could be, or it could be as well as a sign of something for, for, for come. Like this one's not as bad, but as you and I both know, there could be worse ones. Like you know, the 19, this, uh, 18 this, Spanish flu. This and it, it may not be called the coronavirus. It may be called a, a curse or something else in there. A plague, yeah. You 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 have to put it together to figure it out. Got you. That's that's uh, that's that's facts and. You've covered this topic in probably your solo material and GGO mixtapes and such, but as right now we're, we're under the so-called quarantine. You know, you're hearing this, uh, you're starting to hear these uh, double speak uh, phrases and these uh, kind of conditioning phrases uh, such as social distancing. Um, what do you think is up with this quarantine? That will lead me to my next question. Well, just see, see they, 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 they getting things ready that they already have planned. All this has been planned. This is no last minute thing that they got to figure out to, when, when it happened. This been this was planned to happen. To let let go of the virus and the quarantine the people. This was all planned. Facts. Facts. Uh, the plan. They got they got FEMA camps and coffins. They got to fill those shits up with some with somebody. Right. 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 Something. Something got to happen. I something, feel you. Something got to go in it and on it or something. Because they got a lot of those shits. It's like a millions of them shit somewhere. And uh, the, shit's gotta, the shit's got to get filled up now. There you go. So the, uh, game, the, the game get real now. Ray, if you could tip your camera back. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, you hold it right there. Good. You're, just, you're a little close. The, the, the game about to get real right now. It's been getting real, man. But that's a, that's kind of what I was getting at. I mean, you have you have covered a lot of this material, so like for people to say that any any of the material you guys or you yourself has covered and, and call it conspiracy theory is complete. I, I I call it accurate, you know, because a lot of what you guys said is has either happened or come very close to happening. You know what I mean? We were studying this shit in '99, and before that, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. 1999, all the way back then, we was already in the Millennium 2000. We had the Millennium 2000 um, tape, Illuminati shit, way back then. 94, long time ago. 
We yep, knew that yep. shit way early. That shit was like old news to us by the by the by the time it got public. We like, man, we've been knew about that shit. Y'all got me crazy. We knew who they were. We like, did you know? Do you know who Jordan Maxwell is? And the the main Anthony Hilda. You don't know who Anthony Hilda is, then you don't know nothing about that shit. And um, because we had met them dudes, and that that, that was that. Was, that's how it got real for us. That's when we figured out, okay, this shit is real. Facts, facts, facts. You, I noticed you covered the uh, a topic that I'm obsessed with that people know from my music is you covered the UFO topic many times in your material, and I, I think that's why me and you get along. <laughs> I was, you know, how long I was on to that, though, I got across that because Zachariah Sitchin was going in with things. Okay? Yeah, that's... He's my number one source, too. I mean, I've heard the big thing on the internet now is debunking, debunking these guys. But, I mean, Sitchin is, is one of my main sources, too. He, he's probably my favorite. He one went all the way there with the whole Anunnaki thing. He was deep into it. And he hit it with the accuracy like like crazy. Um, uh, since, since you just talked about back in the day, uh, The Last Future, I think when we did our Rizid review, I got the members mixed up. So it was Supreme on the Beats. And me and Seventh Ambassador. You and Seventh Ambassador, and it was just you three at the time, or I thought there was one other MC. It was just no, no others. Just me and Seventh was the last future. Shout out to Seventh, dude is absolutely fire. And another guy that I think is totally underrated. What I would easily say, one of the best in my opinion. You know, from from the early age. You know, you know your stuff. Just just to, to hear, hear what you're saying. Let me know a lot about you. Uh, let me know where you paying it, how you paying attention to this shit. And uh, uh, I'm I'm a killer priest, Hellraiser, Seventh Ambassador, Sixty Second, uh, cannabis ca- kind of guy. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm, that's exactly <laughs> that kind of kind of league right there. That's that league league of that kind of shit. You do not want to go in that room over there. That's <laughs> goddamn right. Put out the um, best fucking rhymes in the world if you go in a room like that. Get get torn apart to get absolute pieces. Uh, uh, do you have any more legendary street stories, like the time when uh, you, your man on the block tried to front on you in the early days, and then Supreme came out and checked him because that was probably my favorite story in the whole doc. <laughs> <laughs> like the first five minutes. That shit is that shit is crazy because. Um, these stories be bugging me out, and I was like, that, yeah, "Oh boy, here we go." <laughs> and like, we don't really see that side of you because you don't you don't really rap about. Like, I'm sure you could focus on that a lot if you wanted to, but your material has advanced so much. We don't really see the street side of Razor that much. But once in a while, <laughs> you let it out. But just when they did the origin, I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is like. Damn near my favorite there part. Is, there is a dark side to Razor, though. That's the that's the hell Razor. That's a yeah. Exactly. There, there is a dark side to that. For sure, for sure, for sure. That and I and I like the evol- the evolution too. But you know what I'm saying. I can't lie. Sometimes the hell Razor side, when you're freaking like like the Red Hook. Uh, oh man, the the Red Hook anthem and just some of that stuff when you're just wrapping your ass off. It's like oh my gosh. That's the Hellraiser side, but you just go crazy, you know. But I'm, I'm sorry, you, you might you might not like it, but, but we do. <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever said in it. But it's um, some strong content in there, though. A lot of that shit, yeah. like the That's Razor, a lot of Renaissance child. There's some good content in there in there to get out of those projects. I mean, you could be being aggressive and arguably spitting some of your best stuff. So I think I love I love the Razor duality. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, I'm a huge Hellraiser nerd too. So it's so dope that you took your name from that, or you know, whatever kind of got your name from that. Because dude, those first couple of movies are are absolutely incredible. That's in a way, I can't. You know, sometimes I I actually pulled it off. Like I, there was a time. Where I was thinking that, no, nah, that's not gonna be able to happen. I'm not gonna be able to do it. I just think I couldn't do it, and I actually did it. And I should. <laughs> uh, it's 
It, like, for you to say that, but I'll think no fan would ever, ever know that part right there. Like, for us, it's just like, oh, yeah, he did it. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, right. like, I didn't, I didn't plan to die. I didn't fucking become my heaven raise up. No, oh, for sure. Yeah, we just, everything lined up the way it happened because that was just the way it was planned. It was God's plan. Right. And, um, right. like, like the, the way it happened is so bugged out because it's like, Razor's ladder took them up the ladder mm -hmm. to get them ready for having have a razor. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Razor's ladder was good, but heaven razor is really good. Like that. That's I mean, we were all scary, sick. That's the scary thing about it because heaven razor came in where he then uh, dies at the beginning to, 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 to get the shit all started. And mm -hmm. It's like, why wow, that's the plan? Because the ending of the Renaissance child was that happening and then leading to the Heaven Razor shit saga. And uh, I mean, how you were spitting the the Sitchin content and like how that kind of lined up with, with the more modern priest albums like Planet of the Gods, like how you guys all evolved similarly separately once again like similar to the original group and like oh, really if you took all your albums and put them all up it would be like a series it would be like Sitchin's like Earth Chronicles like this one's 12th planet Heaven Raises Stairway to Heaven you know what I mean this like for people that really know the content like us that's how I describe it but that might be too third eye for the uh, for these uh, fluoride drinkers um, I want to jump back to the film real quick uh, and I don't mean to like list off every cameo you guys had because you had everyone in it ever in like New York hip hop legends but did you get a chance to uh, get like feedback from like RZA or Crooked Eye or have you heard from anyone if they saw it and what they thought just given that they were in it off the top of my head right, right now I don't know I don't recall that yeah I mean I'm sure it, it just dropped like the other week so I'm sure I'm sure dudes will start watching it and get back to you I mean R.A. was all over that so I'm sure he'll be a fan plus he's in the trailer so you know what I mean uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. he's he been full of flesh on it too facts he's been he been snapping uh the uh so just jumping back in and out uh the, the quarantine um I think, I don't know if I was asking you before, but like your thoughts on like the current quarantine and these so-called lockdowns, like California's on lockdown. It's looking like New York City will kind of be on somewhat of a lockdown too. And there's talk of bringing in the National Guard and all this other kind of stuff that we've discussed. Yeah, yeah, because that's worldwide right now. Facts. It's real bad in Italy. Shout out to Italy. Shout out to my homie uh, Frino in Italy. This is worldwide right now. Yep, yep. It's ugly, it's ugly stuff. I mean, it, you know, it's just a lot of people need it need to keep their faith close right now. And uh, you know, what I'm saying, um, yeah, man, it's just it's just getting ugly out there. So shout hey. out to everybody for tuning in. Drop some likes and subs. Yeah, because it's get real. This way, it get real right now. Um. Real quick, I just thought of uh, something because uh, Young Reza uh, dropped us a comment on the uh, on the film review. Um, I, I forgot to discuss it when we were reviewing Risen, but now I'm back with you here again, so I get to I get to recycle and do things that I forgot before. Um, that reenactment of, of Young Reza when he played you when you were young, absolute well, fire! That was a genius idea. Well, I couldn't have nobody else better doing doing play play me than my own damn son. It wouldn't make no damn sense. He would be upset with me if I had anybody else play a part like that. He'd go, Dad, why, 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 why would you just let me do it? <laughs> and he also looked exactly like you, so if you had anybody else do it, they, they probably wouldn't have looked like you. <laughs> you understand that's the most frightening part of that shit every time I look at it? Because I'm like, wow, like this was done on purpose now. I'm like, I'm like look, I'm like, this looks like actually me and it's funny and um it puts everything together so so perfectly when it's done like that because he's the same one playing me and kids in the street yeah yeah absolutely fire um i mean when you watch it does it look like 
how things were to you? Does it remind you of, of back in the days? Yes. And it takes me through phases, my different phases. Because I had my phases when I was in my teenage, my, when I was a teen, in the teens. Then I was in the 20s. I was on some different shit. When I got to the, my 20s, I was totally different. And then, then when I got to my 30s, I was totally different when I got there. So, so, so it takes me through the phases that I was going through at those times. And I look at it and I'm like, wow. Because for him, to, for, for me, looking at him was like, that's a phase or a me of 10 years or so right there. Just looking at it. Like, wow, that's how much, the, that's how much time is flying right now. Time is flying that fast. Damn, that's like 20 years standing in front of me right now. My son like 25, 25 or some shit. So it's like, that's 25 years of, of this shit already. Yeah, man. That, that, that's kind of like uh, maybe one of my favorite parts of the documentary, too, is how expertly Frank covered the, you know, the last future, the Sons of Man early days to all your projects to you guys getting signed and getting your deal. And then it goes to your solo, pro just the way he followed the timeline. I mean, I, I know I just looked at that. That's the way you want a story to be told. So nobody come rolling around thinking they got a part of something that, that wasn't in it. And then they go, Oh yeah, I'm going to tell this part of the story that wasn't in it because I know it is. And then, Cause you got people trying to just figure that shit out right now. Make, then, make it up. Oh yeah. I know something that he left out the, the, the whole movie. So I'm gonna tell this story. I'm gonna tell this part. To tell this part, bugging themselves out with shit like that right now. But um, it was no better way to connect it than than the Frank brought it together perfectly. Um, pretty much the number one comment we had was um, you know, we felt that there was nothing left out <laughs> when we when we did the review. You know what I mean? We were like, dude. They told you every Sons of Man fact. They told you every race uh, fact. They followed every second. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like some uh, watered down or censored, just like you said, kind of just glossing over it. Well, yeah, they got a deal and blah, blah, blah. They did some solo albums. Yeah. <coughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, um, just since we're on the topic currently, and I'll bounce around to some other stuff I got, you know, back and forth. Um, what I really liked when they interviewed a uh, prodigal and obviously 60 um, and prodigal had like the, uh, he showed the vinyls of all the original records and stuff like that. When, when you know, when you dropped, when you, when they were following the story, um, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts about like the, the red ant thing and how, uh, like how the label folded and stuff like that? My thoughts is that's, that's more part of the journey right there. That that that's more part of the journey of everything happening coming together, mm -hmm. because uh, because a lot of that stuff was going on and was going on was running around because of me again, and um that stuff was happening because of this because of that and all kinds of shit was happening, and um that takes me to like that was like ninety seven or ninety eight that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was uh, we released that in in ninety eight. So we had to be doing it in the ninety seven, ninety six, ninety five. We had to be running around re to record all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you guys were in the uh, Wall Street Journal, the documentary. You said when the when the label folded, like uh, they they mentioned you guys. <laughs> that the, the, like the, at that season, at that time when we just came out, we just came out with the single with Earth, Wind, and Fire. With Wild Clef and Old Dirty Bastard. Yeah, yeah. We just had a, nothing but a full force of fire with the single coming out like that. Yeah. And yeah. good and good feedback on it. Yeah. And yeah. right around the season of that happening, it spins around. And then you hear, oh my God, the label folded. It's like fucking what what are you talking about? Are you fucking serious? So now it's like, what the hell are we gonna do now? We gotta re, we got we all gotta do do something, hey, and we gotta re, re, re strategize this whole shit now. So then that begins my journey of changing the name now. Right, okay, right. I gotta change the Hellraiser. No more Hellraiser now. 
And right. uh, it's time for time to change that name now. And um, because I'm like, okay, if this kind of shit could just disappear, smash away, and go away, and everything's gone, and that name is attached to all that shit, then it's gone too. And um, but I still be, I be still in existence. No, I can't do it. Can't, can't, can't wait for it to happen. Uh, and I'm not gonna wait for it to happen. But that, just, that, that, that just sparked the, the fire for that shit back way, way back then. And um, I just, just kept pushing it. And I kept getting little hits from it was certain people. It's only, a, only a few artists in the game that I know personally that are always, oh, they always call me Heaven Razor. And uh, that 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 was like the little hint right there. Dope. Most most deaf is one of them. He will always he never called me Hellraiser. That's he, fire. He, he would go have a I'm like, oh, what's good, most you know. And that's the, that's that's the big brother right there. So so but like seeing him, and I'm like, okay, I noticed that it would be him and somebody else. They were oh, out of anybody. They would always call me Heaven. And I'm like, okay, okay, I gotta go that direction. And um, mm -hmm. okay, here's here's a couple of random follow ups. When you were 14 years old, you were mentored by RZA, and you were you were you were rapping out of your mind. At any point, did you feel out of your mind with bars? And when you first put the pen to the pad, did your notebooks explode into like a napalm like firestorm? Because from your early bars in the group, that's what it sounds like happened. But see, at that season, at that season, I had a hunger for that shit like I never had it no more. Like I never had it before. Because that was, I eat, sleep, and shit at music all day. Yeah, that's yeah. all I knew and that's all I did. I didn't have to have a job of families, do all kinds of other shit. All yeah. I knew was music 24-7. That's all I knew and all I did at that season. And uh, I was a monster. And um, cause, cause, cause that's all I love to do. I would collect beats, make beats, have ideas, want to be in the studio. I was always creating, always creating. So you were focused, like crazy. How, I never asked you this before, and I've interviewed you what four or five, maybe six, seven times now. Um, when you guys came out of the last future, how did you meet Priest? Priest. I met Priest. Priest was with um at that season him and Baz was supposed to be they was the disciples of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. So they was the disciples of Armageddon. We was in the studio. We was recording stuff and um we did the um what came out of that that same season. Uh Five Archangels came out of that oh season. Oh my god, man. I've listened to Five Archangels probably I don't know, ten thousand times. I swear there's days where I've gone through like Maybe just listening to Five Archangels like a whole like a whole day. There's there's so many bars, dude. It's Did literally you know awesome. what's so funny? Do, you know what uh, two songs was made on the same day? Five Archangels and um, Death Be the Penalty. Yeah, Five Archangels is one of the most insane things ever made. With uh, sixty singing on that beat and how you guys like. How you guys all rhymed on it. it was like it literally sounds like there must have been nothing left at that booth when you left. I, I think you guys melted that microphone to like. Yo, I had to listen to that song a thousand times after we we made it and came came, came home with his shit on a cassette tape. Because back then there was all cassette tapes. Yeah. And ADATs. That was the only thing was ADATs and cassette tapes and two inch rails. So we had to carry them big ass two inch rails to the studio. That shit was annoying. Kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your backpack, in, in a duffel bag and shit, like freaking double barreled shotguns. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's so funny? The, 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 the sound on that shit, on the albums that came out then, is different. And it sounds it's heavier and it's more dirtier. It sounds like, you know, now ah. music sounds too clean. Like, yeah, yeah. Too, too clean and shit. And, um, yeah, I was, gonna, was it on the reels? Oh god, I can't believe I forgot what those reels are called. Uh, the two inch reels. Those are yeah. two inch reels. Yeah, yeah, the reels. Yeah, man. That. Oh my gosh, man. I can't even believe I've never talked about five archangels with you before. But I think it was just a, uh, a telep telepathic link 
between us that we never needed to speak about it because I thought you already knew it was one. Of, I don't want to say it's one of the best hip hop songs ever, but I think it might be one of the best hip hop songs ever. Um, that was a season where you had to rhyme for real, dude. Man, it was so nuts. Uh, I'm trying to think of definitely that, and trying to think of what probably uh, "Soldiers of Darkness." That 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 might be the other one that I listened to about a couple million times. <coughs> that was a bingo. That, that, that was that was a bingo, and I wasn't even on it. Yeah, that shit is that shit is heat. Uh, and the uh, but I did talk about the. I'm pretty sure I talked about the video with you before. Anyway, uh, we we kind of drifted off a little bit. Um, I was gonna get going along with this quarantine thing, a topic that you've covered on. Uh, your solo material, as well as uh, like some of the GGO tapes, uh, like what I was alluding to earlier with the whole National Guard and uh, this military clamp down. Uh, do you have any thoughts on martial law and what is currently going on? Yeah, it's not it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a, it's a reality right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a state of mind of thinking that it's something that's not really going to happen, or it's not happening, or that's just some conspiracy theory thing, you're in for a surprise. Because it, it already happened. Back, Late. Back. The fact it's on the news, it already happened. It's late. That, that, that means it's late already. Yeah, I feel that. That's that's 100%. That's 100%. Ain't no lies. No lies detected. You late. you late to the party already. That's we we we've been we've been ready to the party. That's how we started this thing off. And, and, and you've been in quarantine. Facts. They've been quarantined you a long time ago. I think. Um, would you have any advice for people as far as prepping for prepping for a disaster, or prepping for lockdown? Um, I know it's a lot more relevant now, but I mean, as you know, I'm I'm a I'm quite a thorough prepper myself, long in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, having a survival kit right now is something that's pretty pretty real that you better get used to doing. Mm, mm. As you said, it's more reality now. You better have a survival kit inside your house house right now. Facts. Because it'll go down right now. You you won't be able to do nothing. You'll be just stuck and stuck and stuck out there with, with your pants down. <laughs> I like how you put that. <laughs> I mean, it's I don't need to laugh, but it's facts. That's the only reason I'm just reacting to how real it is. <laughs> That's the worst way to be caught, man. You don't want to be caught out there with your pants down. That's a bad look. That's the truth. That's a that's a that's a whack look. That's to, that's horrible. And that's from it coming from not listening. And that comes from you being told some shit was going to happen, but you want to sit there with it, nah, 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 this, uh, talking, talking, talking shit, and then it happened, and then you stand there looking stupid like, oh, shit, oh, yeah, I did, they did say this was going to happen. <laughs> Dude, I, I think me and you need a, man, if, if Sewell ever gets the uh, podcast up, man, we might need to get you <laughs> regular on there because... If people really see that that side of your personality, how I see it, dude, it's just it's it's way it's way too real. Um, I want to throw another uh, current event at you real quick. I, I think I know your answer, but kind of going along with the other question I asked is the this thing that Andrew Yang brought up on the presidential trail of the universal basic income. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? And and because people are talking about these Trump checks getting cut during the crisis. Yeah, but, see, but you know what? See what they're doing with that is is trick knowledge. Yeah, it's trick knowledge. They're doing that. They're playing. They playing trick knowledge now. If you wait, if you wait for them to feed you the dog food, it you know it'll it, you'll uh you'll become you know docile types, kind of like the, the the bread and the bread and uh, circus of the Roman Empire, you know. If you give the masses their, you know, little pebbles, you know, you get them to do what what you want type thing, like make us subservient. It's a swift move. Honestly, it's a swift move on Trump Trump part to get reelected. Yeah, give everybody money. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and that's exactly what the fuck gonna happen. They're, they're trying to take the money before you know it, they'll be reelected his ass in, 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 the, in the next four years. 
to be the president. And buy the votes. He does it right before the election to buy the votes. It's mighty funny that there's a fucking virus that coming right before the election for the past fucking eight years or so. This shit been happening this way. And, Good point. Uh, Good point. For Ebola, fucking every every fucking time there's an election. Yeah. In terms of fucking coronavirus, some weird shit that nobody know how to say. For sure, for sure. Um, hey, back up your camera a little bit, raise. We kind of we kind of lost you. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. It's the election. Every, every time the elections come, there comes the, the mystery uh, virus. Come. That's facts. That's facts. Um, I mean, do, do you think do you think the money would help people? This is my whole thing about it: is why did we have to wait for the virus for him to cut the checks? Why couldn't he have just given that to people anyway? Given that it's basically hard. Well, well, when, when, they, when they do when they do suspect shit like that, you gotta pay attention. Facts. That's that's because somebody that somebody owns the patent to that fucking virus. Somebody owns that virus, and they, before it get found out. Who own who's the owner of it? They'll probably pay you to shut up before you start finding shit out. And um because you start asking questions and looking around, you're gonna find some shit out like, oh shit. So and so McDonald's on the patent to the fucking coronavirus. And See some, mm -hmm. I heard some stuff about the the lab that it, it may have leaked on, you know, you know supposedly being a possible uh, weapon or whatever you know what i mean um but we don't basically the point is we don't we don't know how it leaked like you're just saying you know you know what you know what kills me about the whole shit though nobody talk about what was done to create china to let loose something so deadly on this fucking country right now and not tighten their borders, you know, they let it loose on the world, you know. They could have and also if you remember, they lied about it, they tried to keep it hush hush, and that's what leaked it out. If they had announced it to everybody, everyone could have closed their borders in advance and they could have, you know, kept it local. But you have to wonder, as you said, what, what was going on and why it did happen. Also, did you see how China, that one Chinese official tried to blame the uh, US Army? For it, and then Trump went back and forth, trolling them late. Hey, uh, exactly, exactly, because now the truth is about to come out. And so before, so. before the truth starts surfacing, then it's like shut them, turn them niggas off, and shut it off right now because then now, now they're talking too much. Facts. Um, popping back into the music, I uh, just want to keep it moving. Uh, I want to cover you guys' – we'll briefly cover you guys' new record, the Sons of Man reunion album, The Rebirth. Um, I had a chance to check it out on Spotify and iTunes and everywhere, and uh, it's absolutely fire. I, I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts on uh, on how the, the return album kind of turned out. I mean, Prodigal was behind all that. And uh, I mean, he, I mean, he did the best he could do. He did a good job putting it together. He did the best he could do with what he was, what he was doing, doing to do it, do it with. I think it sounds super good. I mean, the the content is next it's level. A lot, it's a lot. It's a lot of signature um songs in there. That signature Sons of Man songs in there too. I mean, everybody is is spitting on there. You know what I mean? Like, I I really liked uh, the energy level and just. Uh, you know, it, and I, I don't want to say it sounds vin vintage because it obviously sounds different than your old stuff, but it sounds modernized, you know, and at the same time, similar to the old style. I think it's a super solid record. I think it's a record, actually. And I think it's a that's a good album right there. So everybody go check that out. Sons of Man, The Rebirth on iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you dorks listen to your crappy digital bullcrap nowadays, but it's not as cool as the cassettes and vinyl me and Razor were just talking about. Um, can we cover Prodigal real quick, man? I know you've mentioned him on the on the old radio show and stuff like that. And just like, what do you think of Prodigal? I know he, I know he means a lot to you, and you told me that uh, he, he's like mentored a lot of stuff for you in the past and stuff. Just like, what does Prodigal mean to Razor? That's my big brother right there. Facts. That's my big brother right there. He's a monster too. Uh -huh. Big, big facts. Uh, prodigal, holla at me, man. I'm gonna holla at you, prodigal. Let's get it cracking, man. I really want to get you next. So, 
um, keep my series going. I had Rasul last. Now I got Reza. I need Prodigal next to keep my spiritual hip hop interview uh, series going. Um, let's cover uh, a guy that we, me and you were just talking about off camera at the Move beginning. Forward. 60 second assassin, man. This guy is a bad <laughs> dude. Is do you know that's who sings on, on, on Cash Foods Everything Around Me? The song, Cream. oh my gosh, I did not that's, know that. That's, that's, who, that's who's singing on Cream. Oh my gosh, man, he's so epic, man. He's he's fire, man. And I, I love his solo projects too, like all the mixtapes and kind of that solo stuff you do. And uh, I, I like how Frank covered him in the uh, in, in the Risen, you know what I'm saying? Like, he kind of got his just due there because they, you know, he got. He got interviewed and stuff multiple times, and uh, you know he gave his whole thoughts on the on the situation. But uh, man, if you if you guys aren't familiar with sixty seconds uh, solo stuff, go check that out, man. And that dude, man, like how he sings that band, it just it totally brings out that sons of man flavor kind of five archangels griminess, you know. Like, and one final thought, about that dude. Seeing him uh, live when you guys were at the show and how he was singing the expand your mind on the on the heavy mental hooks, man. Dude, that was the I've ever seen. <laughs> like that was uh, he, he, he fun to be in a studio way, I'll tell you that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Um Man, the, the the show was just so epic, and I love also how uh, Frank uh, played your verse uh, when you when you spit at the uh, at the pre-show in, in Brooklyn. You was at that show? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And I'm just saying, they had the nice camera and they <laughs> they filmed your verse. Of course, I was there, but <laughs> they had you in Scripture. Shout out to Scripture. They had Scripture standing wow. right. Yeah. Yeah. But man, that show was freaking epic, man. I remember when Priest walked in, dude. He was 10 feet tall, man. <laughs> Crazy, right? Dude, that was nuts, man. And actually, the whole set was fire. Shout out to uh, Timbo King and, and Coop, how they opened. And, you know what I'm saying? Just, man, literally, that was one of the best uh, uh, shows I've ever been to. And our, obviously, you know, I came like eight hours from Boston to get there, man. I traveled that whole day <laughs> to get down there with you guys. I left right after work. Took me all day to get there. <laughs> nah, but I'm glad you came, though. Nah, I'm glad I came too, man. <laughs> Literally, I was telling the boys in the review we did. I was like, I was trying to tell them, like, dude, that was one of the best shows I've ever been to. Uh, it was absolutely fire. Um, I guess this is a good time to just cover Priest, um, real quick. How was it uh, for you that night, like getting to chill with with the boys again, and you you going up on stage and spitting your verse? And shit. That was like being rejuvenating. Was was that the ascension of the of the heaven raiser to your next? Uh, what I forget what level it was after El Raziel was that the ascension from heaven raiser to El Raziel? Oh, 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 I remembered it. <laughs> like that 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 blew the breath of life back into me. Facts, 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 facts. How did you feel when, when we were walking out and stuff? They filmed your walk-in and your walk-out? I haven't seen them two together in years. So they, that was like a crazy moment right there. To see them together in the moment I see them together, we're doing one of our favorite well-known songs, Tai Chi, out of all of their songs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was right after your birthday. Exactly. <laughs> so it was like back to back, bam, 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 bam. Was like just consistent consistency. You know what? The energy at that show. I actually finally saw Wu Tang Clan uh, last summer. We have a festival out here, uh, and a huge festival at Wu Tang and Snoop uh, headline. So that was my first time seeing the Clan live. But uh, man. That energy in that room in Brooklyn, man, like those Priest fans and those SOM fans, man, like they basically knew like every one of you guys, they knew every song, you know, of Heavy Mental. Like 
I've never seen such a fervent fan base. Like it, it showed me that those those Sons of Man fans are still there. Like in in uh, in New York and in Brooklyn. Like does it does that you know what does that mean to you? That the, the fan base has been there. For that, so that means every, that means everything because that's who you're doing it for, and that that's inspiration to keep you going. I agree. I agree. Because it lets you know somebody's paying attention. Man, I was super impressed. I mean, the the, rea the reaction you guys got was like, man, I felt like, I mean, the only thing I have to compare to that is like the Wu-Tang uh, of Mikes and Men documentary. I don't know if you've seen that documentary on Showtime, but it's the four-part series uh, that RZA made about the clan and how they showed like all their old footage and stuff. Like, dude, when I was in that room with you guys, I, I felt like I was in the 90s. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I felt like I was in a time machine. Like, plus it was the heavy mental <laughs> show. You know what I mean? The re, uh, the anniversary show. So, and that was the season when so that was like a golden age of hip hop, right there. Yeah, that's that's the closest I've been to like, other than listening to the records. To like, uh, I'm like, damn, I'm like, Priest is one of my favorite MCs. I'm gonna freaking go down there to the damn show. And uh, anyway, shout out to Priest. I uh, I met him. He's out here in SoCal. I love his podcast. Everybody go to the Kill a Priest uh, YouTube channel and subscribe to Priest's uh, podcast. They do, I think, weekly shows. And uh, they also uh, do um, live shows and stuff like that. He always has awesome guests. Shout out to KP. He's the man. Um, let's just, I've only got a couple of questions left, but um, let's get your final thoughts on Priest. What it was like working working with him, and what do you think to, about Killer Priest, the King Zohar, the A tier Ocelot Claw? Me? Yeah. Priest is like one of the most legendary artists I ever worked with. Because because he keep you on your you gonna have to be in your A game or around Killer Priest. You ain't yeah. coming to play with the with, with the sword. You are gonna have to sharpen your skills and come and come. With your A game, monster man, and uh, all his all his uh, material is so next level. He actually just recently did that heavier mental uh, freestyle. I don't know if you, if you yo got when he sent me that we was cracking up because I was like, oh my god, you gonna do it? You gonna, this is perfect time for this. Yeah, and yes, because I was like, what is this? He's like, you ready? No, check it, check it out. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh man. Mm hmm. See, see, it's funny because a lot of this stuff we talked about years ago, and now it's actually 2020 right now. This is the future right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And back, uh, then, back then, this was considered the future. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of considered the future now. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, a equivalent to your uh, your heaven raiser, uh, like I think like his planet of the gods is like, uh, you know, in a similar element. And I, I love the animated music videos that he did for that. And um, he, he has a couple other new joints, too. The, a couple, the yeah, I'd say Origins. Or, or, is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he did our joint, Throne of Blood. Go uh, check out Throne of Blood on the on the channel. We'll, uh, we'll place that here, Bing, so you guys can... Give it a spin. That's my that's my solo album joint with with Ray. So we got our little science fiction movie going on, anime, which is a classic. Absolute fire! It's like that's a, and then that you know they they made that Blade Runner sequel after after we made Throne of Blood, which you know what I'm saying we kind of had ours out first, but uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying uh, yeah, Priest dropped a couple other new joints, the Unknown Source uh, stuff, and obviously all all the Priest stuff Priest stuff's always fire. Um, I, I hope he, I think he's been talking about, it. I, I think Rasul said, uh, Priest is working on a new album and Sewell heard some of it. It was like absolutely insane. That's deep. Real, uh, real quick. I got one more for you and then we can get out of here. Um, one guy that we talked about before that I, I liked his original stuff a lot is Jay Electronica. That project finally dropped and it had Jay-Z on like every song. And I, I found it to be a little bit underwhelming given how advanced Jay Elect used to be. And then it had it had Hove on like damn near every song. I'll, I'll send it to you, to you so you can peep it. It just dropped the other day. And it, send, send me that because I'm kind of 
wow, just going to that level now. Okay. Yeah. That's you what know what I did? I did hear. Did that come out on Rock Nation? I think so. Yeah. That's what that's what Elect is signed to. I did hear that, but I didn't know it was to that point. And I see yeah. what they're doing. I see what they're trying to do right now. And um, it's, it's like half the one spiritual guy teamed up with the other guy, which is what Jay Z is. But I can't really say that like Hove was bad on there. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people said Hova outshined Jay Elect, and I have to somewhat too. I don't think he so would be able to do it that easy though. That's not not gonna happen. I'm gonna just. That's what you would think, but honestly, these beats are not my favorite beats, and I don't, I don't even want to go in because this is the Hellraiser uh, Risen interview. But I'm gonna send it to you, and me and you will, will talk about it. We can cover it on maybe I could go like Instagram Live with you or something, and we can maybe get your reaction. But it wasn't what I what I expected. I'll just say that. But Jay Electronica has some stuff out there that's fire. I'll say that much. You know. Um, just because it's a recent thing that happened, that's the only reason I brought it up. No, nah, no, nah, but I'm glad you did because that, that's something mm -hmm. I need to be in front of my, my my radar right now. You know me, I follow my stuff. You know what I'm saying? I do I do a few things, but uh, I cover my bases. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm special forces, GGO. Exactly. With the wings up. Um, I only got one, basically one two part question for you. Obviously, everybody, go check out Risen. The story of Sharon Smith, the Risen documentary on Amazon Prime. It's absolutely fire. Shout out to everybody who had a part in making that. All of SOM, Frank, uh, Paul, everybody else who helped out with the project. And everyone's been showing me mad love retweeting uh, my stuff and helping out with the promo. Um, do you have any new – I know you've dropped like 500 mixtapes. So I'm just wondering if you if you had any new stuff or anything else you're working on. Uh, any, you know, as far as that. What did I drop recently? I think when it's a, the, 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 a recent project I just put out was called Everything or Nothing, produced by JJ. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's the most recent. And DJ Flip, it's me, DJ Flipside, and producer JJ called Everything or Nothing. Um, I remember you you plugged a lot of stuff on the old shows that we did with you. Did did your uh, I have I, a, I have a few. I was uh, after I changed my name to Heaven Razor. If you want to look for albums, look up Heaven Razor. Look Google Heaven Razor albums because I have albums under that artist name. Just 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 that, and um, like Hell Razor gave you the Heaven Razor album. But then after I changed the name to Heaven Razor, I started giving you albums under the name Heaven Razor. Facts, facts. And it's all fire. And also the El Raziel, you know, to, and Spiritual Scarface. Check out all Razor's mixtapes. Right. Can they find it on your website? Or? Most of that stuff is there or, or it's on um, which whatever you use for music. Spotify, iTunes, whatever, Apple Music, whatever you're using. You put in my name in there, it's gonna come up. All my music is gonna show up in there in those places. And, uh, all my albums. And um, if you did, if you didn't, if you missed something like, there's a few joints I dropped, like Occam's Razor, Zion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so a few joints. That's that God's Wrath. Me and God's Wrath finally dropped the album together. And that was Akko's Razor. That's Bananas, too. And see, those those are Heaven Razor albums. Spiritual Scarface, that's the Heaven Razor album. Yo, yo, yo. We got your race? You lost me? Um, anyway, I'm going to just drop some promo links for you guys. To, I was going to ask Razor about GGO, but it looks like he froze up on us. So. That's government okay. officials. Oh, got you back. Yes, sir. There he is. We, uh, you had a little blip there. Uh, any top secret GGO projects that may or may not be disclosed? Top secret GGO projects? Um, <laughs> I don't think I would talk about a top secret GGO project on camera, on video. <laughs> That'll be pretty good. I got you. I got you. That, that's why I phrased it that way. <laughs> um, anyway, mm -hmm. shout out. Shout out to all our GGOs, Rick Boston, for coming through. Shout out my man, Alphabetic. Got, got a government officials in the building. You know, we sitting there with special forces. 
Facts. And we are just going through some hip hop, some hip hop stuff right now. That's facts. Shout out uh, Queen the Prophet, Scripture, all my PXR boys for holding us down. Um, once again, I'm going to basically wrap us raised, but I'd like everybody to go log on Amazon Prime and go watch Risen, the story of Sharon Smith, how raised his life story slash. Yes, yes, please do. And go, go, um, go support that Renaissance apparel too. All right, the rugged man. And follow Ray's on social media. He's Hell Ray's Graham on the gram. He's Heaven Ray's on the gram. Uh, Ray's of Ruby's on Twitter. And I think you have a couple other Twitters. It's Hell Ray's. Yep, that one too. Uh, Hell Ray's Music Online is your website, if I'm not mistaken. And also get your Ray's a oh, Hell Ray's a Digital. Hell Ray's a Digital.com. Yes, HellRaiserDigital.com is the website. HellRaiserDigital.com uh, to get the Razor merch, like my camo hoodie that you always see me rocking, uh, DiamondsOC.com, and follow our man, uh, Diamonds on, on the on the gram. Dude is fire. He, he hooks up the fire merch. You can literally get any HellRaiser or Heaven Razor thing that you want on there. You can get comforters, bedspreads, bean bags, beach towels, shot glasses, Bed spread, baby, baby suits, backpacks, <laughs> pants, zip ups, track jackets, t shirts, hoodies, the cufflinks. <laughs> Literally, if you if you need something in Hell Raisa or Heaven Raisa brand and you can't like find there, like Diamonds pretty much makes it for you. Like I go to him and get custom orders all the time. Like if I see something and it's sold out, I'm like, dude, I need that camo wife beater. Like, <laughs> and he hooks it up for me. Dude is dude is the man, dude. Hold that guy down. Um, and, yeah, we just like everybody to go uh, watch the film. I don't know. GGO's is tight. Our circle is tight over here. We uh, yeah. watch it. Like, subscribe, share. YouTube.com slash Planet X Records LLC. Follow me at VX Planet X PXR everywhere. And this is pretty much the end of my Hellraiser. Sons of Man, In-Depth, Risen, the story of Sharon Smith, documentary on M- Amazon Prime interview. Um, anything else that you want your fans to know, Reza, or anything I else? I say thank you for everybody who's been supporting me and, um, you know, really supporting me at these serious times right now. Um, one one final thing that we can uh, go out on is, uh, I think, kind of the main point of the documentary, at least for me, is when you said on camera that um, you don't want your fans to be feeling sorry for you and stuff like that when they see you in your, in your recovery and stuff like that. Um, that's a profound uh, truth for me because, you know, sometimes I get the tendency, like when, when people would see some of your stuff on camera and stuff, like they would get this impression that like, almost like you were gone already, you know, what I, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's super disrespectful because you've still put out all these mixtapes and projects You've got a whole damn documentary chronicling your life story, so you know it's like it's like you're still here with us. And I just want everybody to know that. Do you have any final thought on that? No, I mean it's just that you know that sometimes you let things happen that sweep you under the rug. Sometimes facts, facts, and I just want to say, go ahead. Go ahead. and I ain't about to sit there and let that happen. Yeah, right. I, I just want to say that like. For you to have been through this much, like you're one of the most positive people I've, I've ever met, and I don't know how you do it. You're, you're the exact opposite of me, Ray's. <laughs> I'm a Sicilian dude, man. <laughs> I go off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just what it is, two different personalities. But this dude is, is Zen over here, man. Is Ray's the Zen master. The Zen master? What do you mean by that? I mean, you're just, you're like, you're in the calm zone, man. Like, I never see you break. You're always like, you always just keep it like meditated, you know what I mean? Like when I interact with you, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't let my emotions take take over me. That's what I'm saying, man. That's like I think that's very like mature of you, especially in the age of like uh, you know the digital age. If you see these people on Facebook and they're just at each other like friggin', you know, like ants, you know what I mean? They're just like friggin', they're just like you know, they're just like crabs in a barrel. You know what I'm saying? That, that's emotion languages. That's a, that's emotional. It, 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 it is. It, look at him emotional, but it really sets you apart from the pack. <laughs> you, you guys just have a different thing going on, man. This is it's the golden age, uh, you know, 
the way you guys carry yourselves, you know, <laughs> it's just respectful, you know, that's, that's all. <laughs> you got to be on point in these days. It's 2020 right now. It's not, it's not a game right now. I feel that. And I feel like it's been changing since 20, 2012, you know what I mean? And now we're even evolving. That, yeah, that, that, was that. A shop, that was a shop beginning of the change right there. I agree. I agree. I'm 100% on the same thing. But uh, yeah, man, everybody go check out uh, Reza's uh, documentary. Let us know what you think below in the comments. Make sure to follow Ray's, And that's pretty much all I got for Hell Reza of Sons of Band this time. Hoping to keep the series thanks going. For having, thanks for having me come through, man. Appreciate you, King. We're, we're getting everybody to uh, stream your albums and uh, make sure they continue to support you. And shout out to all the fans. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, interview. We got the we got the deep dive with Reza himself. So you don't have to ask me any more questions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, my man. We're gonna let you go. Peace, everybody. Right, wings, we up, wings up, wings up, Felly. Wings up. Shout out to all Reza's fans. We appreciate you guys for watching and tuning in. And uh, make sure to like, sub, and share. We out. Peace. Thank you. Uh, shout out to uh, Bedick and Rick, everybody who came through. Appreciate you guys. Uh, like and share the link when we drop it. Planet X Records interviews, PXR interviews, volume six, Hellraiser. One.